Gabia, also known as Gabita or Gabeta, is the Baltic goddess of fire. She is described as a benevolent spirit who mainly represents the domestic hearth. It is because of her power that the fire can warm up homes, cook food, and bring comfort to human lives. Gabia is believed to have taught humans to make fire. When the world was new and man was first created, she saw them trembling at night and living in fear of the dark. So she appeared before them and created a crimson orange flame that warmed and illuminated the night. But without her, the flame began to die. So she entered into the fire and became the flame itself so she can always warm and bring light to the darkness. Therefore, she is commonly known as the goddess who lives in the fire. She then taught humans how to summon her at night so she can bring warmth and light to them. This is how humans first learn to create fire. In the case of Baltic people, lighting a fire is actually a ritual to invoke the goddess. Gabia is not only the goddess of fire, but also represents prosperity and happiness. It is not known how the goddess came into existence, but there are accounts suggesting that Gabia is a primordial goddess. Her name is believed to be derived from the term Gaubti, which means cover or protect. Initially, the goddess was worshipped in sanctuaries. Often these sanctuaries are said to be groves of oak trees. A holy fire, which was called Shwenta Ukmis, was kept in these holy sanctuaries. These sanctuaries are often located on high mountains and on the banks of rivers. The priests of Gabia, known as Vaidaluts, were responsible for guarding this holy flame and to make sure that the flame doesn't go out. This flame is extinguished and rekindled only once a year. Prior to the Midsummer Festival, the Vaidaluts perform a holy ritual to extinguish the flame and the flame is rekindled during the Midsummer Festival. The goddess is said to visit Vaidaluts in their dreams and tell them of her wishes. Vaidaluts will then deliver Gabia's message to her followers. With the spread of Christianity, the tradition of lighting the Shwenta Ognis was carried to the homes of the followers as Christian missionaries began to destroy these sanctuaries where the goddess was worshipped. Then onwards, Gabia became a household goddess. It became the duty of the mistress of the house to take care of the flame. Every morning, the mistress of the house lights up the flame very carefully and every evening, she takes out the flame and prays to it to ensure the family's good fortune. She should make sure that the fire does not go out from the time it was lit in the morning until the fire is extinguished in the evening. In situations where there is no mistress in the house, the oldest woman in the house attends to the flame, and in cases where there are no women in the house, the eldest man has to attend to the flame. So basically, someone responsible in the family has to take care of the goddess. Putting out the flame from the hearth symbolizes putting the goddess to sleep just like the rest of the family. It was believed that if she was awake at night, the goddess would roam around the house, spreading the ashes and coal all over the place. In extreme cases, the goddess would even leave the house and take away with her all the luck and protection she has given the house. So she is greatly cared for, just like a living person, so even when she gets a chance, she won't leave the house because she gets treated well. It is said that the goddess is fond of eating bread and salt, so a plate of bread and salt is placed near the hearth for Gabia. A basin of water is also placed near the stove so that Gabia can clean herself. Taking care of Gabia is done carefully because the goddess is known to take offenses quite seriously. So putting Gabia to sleep is a ritual performed by the household and not just an act of taking out the fire. Ashes and coals should be placed in bands to allow the goddess to sleep comfortably. Only fresh clean water is used to put out the fire and it is done gently so as not to harm Gabia's eyes. After taking out the fire, Gabia is politely requested to stay in her bed and not wander around. 
acts that will offend the goddess are burning litter in the sacred hearth and speaking harshly towards the fire. Spitting or urinating on the fire is also a great offense against the goddess. When angered, the goddess would put those in the household into a deep sleep and burn the house along with those who live in it. The goddess is also known to have the power to shape shift. She often takes the form of a cat, a beautiful woman in red robes, a rooster or a snake. So when a cat, a rooster or a snake enters a house and stands near the fire, it is not disturbed and allowed to stay there as long as it wants to. Gabia would allow people to use the fire to make offerings to other deities. So in that sense, Gabia can also be considered as a mediator between gods and humans. With the spread of Christianity, Gabia was merged with Saint Agatha. So the rituals that were meant for Gabia were absorbed by Christians as rituals to respect Saint Agatha. Even today, these rituals are practiced but instead of using them to worship Gabia, they are used for Saint Agatha. The personality of the goddess resembles the useful yet dangerous aspect of fire. Even though fire is an element that supports life, it also has the power to destroy it. What do you think of this story? Thank you so much for enjoying today's video and please consider to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. A very special thank you to my Patreon and all my subscribers for your wonderful support. I'll see you again with another story to tell.